Hello everyone, I'm Sanket Singh. I'm working as a software engineer at Google and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in this particular video, I'm going to talk about seven very interesting project ideas that you can actually build starting from the very beginner project recommendations to the very advanced ones in Node.js. So yes, you might be already aware that Node.js is the new buzzword nowadays. It's one of the most hyped and in-demand technology. If you are going to start a new career in tech, or if you have been in the tech industry for quite some time, then you might be already aware about the relevance of Node.js. And in this particular video, I'm going to talk about that what can be some cool project ideas that you can build in order to upskill yourself in Node.js and which can be pretty much impactful as well in your resume also. Without any further delay, let's just start talking about all of these projects. But before we start talking about that, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel. We are going to bring some awesome content on this particular channel regarding tech and software industry. So let's just start. So a lot of people are generally also very confused about the fact that what is Node.js? A lot of people think that it's a language. A lot of people think that it's a framework, but technically it's none of those. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. Now, what is a JavaScript runtime? You can, in very easy terminology, understand that for JavaScript to perform a lot of tasks to get a lot of capabilities, it depends on a runtime environment. A runtime environment gives all the necessary resources that JavaScript needs in order to execute some particular set of tasks. For example, browser is also a runtime environment. In browser, JavaScript gets capabilities to actually interact with the DOM, set timers, right? And all of these things. Similar to that, there is Node.js. Using Node.js, what JavaScript can actually do is, JavaScript gets the capabilities to actually interact with your file system, actually get OS level capabilities and whatnot. So Node.js is not a language. Node.js is not a framework. Node.js is a runtime environment. Similar to Node.js, there is Dino as well. As I said, there is there are different browsers that also act as a runtime environment. So if you were not very much clear about what is a runtime environment and what is Node.js, I believe you got a fair amount of idea. I list some cool documentation from the official docs of Node.js as well as some Medium articles that will give you a fair amount of idea so that you can get better clarity on Node.js, right? So if till now you have been comparing Node.js with other frameworks like Django Rails and Laravel and Spring Boot, it was not the correct comparison. It's a runtime environment. And with Node.js, you get capabilities of a lot of libraries and frameworks that are open source that you can use for different level of tasks. So before starting the video, I would like to tell you about algocam.io. So if you are someone who is going to prepare for your upcoming coding interviews, you are someone who already knows basic problem solving and basic data structures and algorithms. And now you want to just kickstart your journey, or I would say level up your journey for your interviews in let's say next upcoming three to four months where your target is to solve as many good, hard problems as possible that are going to be asked in the top companies, then you can definitely go and check out the top coding interview problems course on algocam.io, where we are going to solve more than 400 problems live as well as in hybrid recorded manner. It's a completely power packed course where we have picked not only just the data structures and algorithmic topics, but we have picked specific lectures where we are going to talk about specific techniques on every data structures and algorithm. For example, you can see there is dedicated lecture on problem solving or arrays, then dedicated separate lectures on two pointers. Then you can see there is dedicated specific lecture on time sense space complexity analysis and their problem solving. Then there is a bunch of revision lectures because we know that recursion and backtracking still pains a lot of students. So there are a bunch of revision lectures for that. Then we'll talk about maths. We'll talk about modular exponentiation and matrix exponentiation because a lot of questions around these are asked in online coding tests. Then we'll talk about problem solving around sorting, basic sorting algorithms, then dedicated problem solving around merge sort based problems. And of course, not just inversion count, but major wide variety of problems around merge sort, then quick sort and similar techniques around quick select algorithm, binary search. And you can see dedicated set of lectures around binary search, binary search on answer, mini max problems, binary search on real numbers and whatnot. Then link list, you can see there are dedicated lectures on stacks. There is dedicated lectures on queues, binary search trees, binary trees, heaps, hashing, DP, tries, string algorithms, and all the different variety of DP along with graphs, DSUs, MSTs, and whatnot. And there will be a lot of mixed problem solving lectures that will happen. This is definitely not a lecture or not a course where we are going to talk about any 
केक वॉक लेवल प्रॉब्लम और समथिंग एवरीथिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू पिक इज गोइंग टू बी मीडियम और लीड कोड हार्ड और द प्रॉब्लम्स आर गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम कोड फोर्सेस और कोड शेफ राइट दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू कैन डेफिनेटली ट्राई एंड चेक इट आउट एंड यू कैन यूज द कोड एलगो कैम्प फाइव हंड्रेड टू गेट अ फ्लैट फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑफ ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी समथिंग रियली पावर पैक एंड समथिंग दैट यू शुड डेफिनेटली चेक इट आउट so if you are someone who is preparing for their coding interviews do check out this course and you can check out more things around algocamp.io so now let's just move back to our video so what is the industry relevance of node.js like why you should learn node.js so you can see that now a lot of startups have emerged in the past 5 to 7 years the tech industry has came a long way right and nowadays node js is one of the most hyped and in demand technology because node js helps us to write javascript for a lot of things with the capabilities of node js only nowadays we are able to use javascript for server side applications for writing scripts for using machine learning based capabilities right frameworks like react js angular react native all of these libraries and frameworks are also very heavily dependent on node js so having knowledge of node js unlocks a huge amount of opportunities for you and the biggest part that it plays is that you can use javascript for back end technologies and trust me on this node js is very heavily used for preparing back end uh, i would say application back end services and what not so using node js in 2023 can be significantly good for your portfolio once you have good knowledge of node js you can even migrate to a bigger stack like a mern stack or a mean stack mern stack makes a lot more sense because there you start using react for your front end then mongo express as the framework along with node js for back end and what not right so that's why i highly recommend all of my students to actually do get their hands on around in node js i also recommend people that apart from node js you should learn one more back end technology maybe something around python or maybe java or ruby but having knowledge of node js is definitely a must nowadays it definitely ups, uh, uplifts your portfolio and can help you to write good back end services and make good back end application based projects with javascript so now how can you actually get better in node js the best way can be to actually start preparing projects right when you start preparing projects in any particular technology you understand a lot of nuances that how to set up the technology how to set up files and folders in that how to write your first hello world how to set up the whole environment and what not so always when you are actually starting to learn a technology or even if you know node js it makes sense to have some cool basic beginner level projects that can help you to revise stuff and get the understanding of most of the things right so like most of the time you will see when people are learning node js for back end technologies they tend to make things like to do app and all i'm not saying that's bad definitely you should try to make something like to do app but you can make some good beginner level project so one of the project that i can recommend you guys is that you can make a random code generator now what's a random code generator in a random code generator you can actually set up uh, let's say 1000 or 5000 codes you can very easily get it from bard or chat gpt right and then in your backend service you can store them in your database or maybe in a file whatever you feel like and then what you can do you can set up a cron like whosoever is a user can register to your application you can set up sign in sign out the whole authentication flow based on jwt or maybe you can use a passport js like library you can set up the whole authentication flow and whosoever signs up what you can do you can set up a cron of let's say 10 am in the morning and then shoot them an email of a new code for the day it's a very simple application you just have to see that how can you set up cron jobs in linux you how to set up sign in sign out the whole authentication flow and how you can persist all of these uh codes in your database that's it that's what you have to actually do so it's not going to take more than a days effort to actually prepare this project and deploy it and people can come on to your application sign up and get a random code daily right it's a fairly simple project you will understand that there is not a lot of nuances or not a lot of complexity but as a beginner level project also it gives some weight to it rather than just making a to do app so this can be one very uh, good and interesting project one more interesting project that i can recommend you guys for a beginner level node js project can be to prepare something like a telegram bot or a discord bot now telegram and discord both of the uh, i would say platforms everyone must have encountered some day in their life right so and preparing bots on these platforms is very easy using node js right you can check the discord uh, discord's uh, sdks and libraries that are available on npm similar to that there are there is a package called as telegraph in uh, that can help you to prepare telegram bots right and it's very easy to set up the whole telegram bot all you can actually do is just uh require your corresponding telegraph node js package get an api key and start using the bot commands that the telegraph package is already providing you and you can maybe make a very simple telegram bot that can actually answer a bunch of questions around tech or maybe help you with some algorithmic questions 
and whatnot. So use making these bots again will be very beginner level thing. It won't require you to uh, spend more than a day and will be very impactful in your resume as well. So these can be some good beginner level recommendation for projects around Node.js that I would like to give you. So some intermediate level projects that you can actually build in Node.js. One of the most cool and one of the most common projects that most of the people definitely build is a chat application, right? So Node.js provides very good amount of capabilities using which you can actually use a library called as socket.io. So you can use web sockets, uh, which is very easily integrated using socket.io library with Node.js. And you can actually prepare an end-to-end two-way chat application kind of, kind of a platform where people can chat with each other in real time. They don't have to refresh the page and all the chat bubbles and everything comes up. You can extend the capability so that uh, people can actually add people to groups and there can be a group chat that can happen, right? You can prepare chat rooms so that the chat doesn't go here and there. And you can persist the chat maybe in a document-based database like MongoDB. And that can be a very cool project to build. Again, not should not take you more than one and a half day or two day, considering that you have to make some UI for it as well. Basic, uh, I would say React-based UI or basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript-based UI should also work, right? And this actually helps you to understand the nuances of web sockets, that how web sockets are so reliable. They are also based on TCP, just like HTTP is also based on TCP. That means WebSocket is going to give you a reliable connection, but that how that pipeline-based architecture actually works, how acknowledgements work in WebSockets, you can actually uh, implement some complex, uh, I would say, implementations. For example, when someone types, then also you can emit an event in a in the socket.io library, and the other person can see that the uh, the person whom with we are chatting, they are typing, right? Or well, let's say if someone has read the chat, you can maybe add some browser-based events to actually see that, okay, when someone is actually focusing uh, on the particular chat bubble, then they have most probably read it. So you can actually send an event of red double tick, single tick, all of those things, right? Blue ticks. So these kind of complex implementations you can actually also do, and you can enhance this intermediate level project to a pretty advanced project. And if you want to implement all of these, it should not take you more than four to five days if you have good knowledge of Node.js. And if you want to also still figure out a lot of things, there are a lot of tutorials on uh, YouTube that you can actually refer to. So this is one very good project. Apart from that, one very interesting project that I would like to uh, ask you guys to build is maybe something like a book my show, like an application or a air ticket, uh, air ticketing platform where people can come and book tickets, search for flights and everything. And try to make this project instead of a one simple monolith in Express, try to make it a microservice based project so that you have two, three services. For example, you have an API gateway, you have a booking service, you have a flight search service, right? you have a notification service, and then all of these services uh, communicate within each other using, let's say, HTTP. If you are not aware about RPCs, then HTTP can also be pretty fine. Integrate databases in that, and this can actually help you to understand how to segregate logic in microservices, how to set up API gateways, Deploy this on AWS with load balancing, uh, with auto load balancing kind of capabilities. So this is going to also help you to understand how microservices can be made using Node.js because most of the time when you will land up in a company, there's a highly likely chance that they will be not only having some monolith projects, but they must be having some microservice based projects as well. So if you want to have good backend understanding, then these microservice based projects can st uh, start making sense and will be very impactful in your resume. So do consider making something like a book my show application and it has a lot of engineering uh, problems as well because it involves uh, bookings, how the seat architecture should be stored in the database. What if two people are trying to book, to book it together? So some transactional capabilities you want, right? What if somebody already pays and uh, some retry happens? How can you implement Im uh, item potency? All of these things can actually be implemented. So it's a pretty good engineering level, uh, I would say, project that can help you to understand a lot of interesting stuff using Node.js. So highly, highly recommended to actually try to implement that. And a fun fact, we also implement this same project and the Telegram bot project that I talked about in the beginner section in our Node.js backend cohort, right? And this is one of the most highlighted project that we built because it involves a lot of microservices that we have to set up and getting the understanding of how exactly microservices are made. So if you want, you can definitely check out that batch as well. We are going to launch uh, most of the recorded course uh, for this backend uh, in Node.js batch. So if you're interested, you can definitely check that out. And let's move on to our next section where I'm going to talk about some of the advanced projects that you can actually build with Node.js. So Node.js has the capabilities to implement streams, right? So if you have not, uh, if you're not aware about what are streams, streams are one of the most powerful tools that Node.js provides, right? You can actually get a flow of data, a stream of incoming data regularly. And you can set up bi-directional or unidirectional streams. There is a huge capability of the streams API that is provided by Node.js. So what you can actually do, you can try to make an online streaming application, kind of like a full stack app, where you can set up the front end with React, where you can consume the streams 
and from the back end you can actually start the streaming through node.js it's very easy to use node.js streams they have got they have got bunch of pipelining uh, functions where you can have a read stream that can be piped to a write stream and whatnot so read about the streams api that node.js actually provides it is a pretty interesting project because most of the time when people actually build something like a netflix clone or something they just embed the video url there but of course hotstar and netflix like application doesn't just load the whole video from youtube or something right they actually have their own backend from where they actually stream all of this data bit by bit so how these streams actually work can be understood using this project so start exploring about this start reading about streams how you can actually make streams how you can modify streams so streams can be modified as well so not just provide huge amount of capabilities around that so make sure you try it Apart from that, one pretty advanced project can be to make a notification service. So let's say people want to set up some notification based on, let's say this notification service can be a part of a bigger project as well, right? But uh, what you want is that this notification service should not be bombarded with a lot of information. So you can actually uh, make it a third party notification service that any other project or someone else, if they want, they can use. Maybe you can open source that. And then if somebody has to request a notification, maybe in terms of email or SMS or something, they have to actually publish an event. You can set up some basic message queues. They are going to publish some events in the message queues and you are going to consume those message uh, messages in the messages queues, right? So this pub sub architecture can be implemented and you will be able to get fair amount of idea that how to set up these kind of queues. For example, RabbitMQ maybe you can actually use. So that can be a pretty interesting stuff to go. So I believe this can be a pretty complex project along with uh, the streaming application that I told you that you can actually build in order to boost your portfolio with Node.js. So one bonus project that I would like to definitely recommend you that you can maybe actually try to make something like a Google Docs clone or a collaborative code editor kind of a thing, which can be actually implemented with a bunch of technologies like Socket.io and Node.js. You can try to implement WebRTC for uh, video conferencing like capabilities, right? So this can also be a pretty interesting and cool project to go for. This can be pretty advanced. So I would highly recommend you guys to actually, first of all, try the other ones, get your good hands-on idea around Node.js and then maybe, then maybe jump to this. Why I'm saying all of this, why I'm recommending all of this project, because projects actually boost your resume a lot. Any technology that you have actually mentioned in the resume, if you have good amount of projects with that, it shows that you have some good grip and good command over that technology. You are just not making things up. And it actually gives a sense of reliability on you that, okay, you can actually contribute and work on this technology, right? So that's why having this kind of a portfolio in your resume is going to make a lot of sense. So that's it for the video guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to drop a like and do consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you can get notification whenever we post a new video. We are going to put a lot of awesome content on this channel. We have already started a C++ uh, free uh, DSA series post which we are going to put a lot of dev related content as well. I might start it posting in between also. We ha I have already recorded a bunch of lectures around some movie booking, basic movie booking, monolith like application as well. So a lot of content is going to come up on the channel. So do consider subscribing to the channel. It's going to help you a lot. And do comment uh, in the comment section that what cool Node.js projects you think one should build and maybe you have also built. Maybe we can make a separate video on your recommendation that what do you guys think uh, for the project building part on the back end. Maybe not just in Node.js, maybe in some other technology like let's say Python or Ruby or Java, whatnot. So let's wrap this particular video here. We are going to meet soon in the next set of videos. That being said, I'm Sanket Singh, signing off.